Will for Sound on Sound at Music Master 2017 with Rolf from Waldorf, who's going to show us the new quantum synthesizer. So, Rolf, what's the story here? Because a lot of companies are making you know, reissues of older synthesizers, reusing old technology. You're using something a bit different, aren't you? Yeah, basically after them, 2016, we thought, where everybody was starting to do analog again and polyphonic analog, we start, okay, what's, what's the heritage of Waldorf? What do we really need new stuff? No clowns, no vintage. Okay, let's do a new flagship synth with hybrid digital synthesis and analog filters. That was the base idea. So what are your different sound sources then? What are the options on this? So the idea here is we have three um, freely assignable oscillators. We have, of course, the classic Waldorf Valve Table Synthesis with all the additions from the Blofeld and the Nave with the speech stuff and a little bit more like drive we put in. We have classic analog waveforms, of course, because you need this as bread and butter. But then we thought, okay, what can we do else? Uh, we have a granular sampler here because a granular gives more different textures, like more exciting, vibrant um, stuff and also the idea of using sample content in a direct matter with analog filters is very interesting in the synthesizer. And last but not least, let's take, get inspired by some physical modeling stuff, but not doing physical modeling, just taking the building blocks. So we have a resonator filter bank here where we can feed in some noise bursts or clicks and then let the filters resonate to get uh, new timbres and new structures and textures here. And you can freely combine them here. And these go then into, because we want to do analog filters, because, well, you can model ana a digi analog filters in digital, but if you want to turn knobs and the behavior and the dynamics, uh, let's do it, because there's also a tradition of analog filters with digital oscillators and Waldorf from the Q and other mm -hmm. models. Right. So we have a dual filters per voice in a parallel mode. You can link them and cut off or uh, use them independently uh, with 12 and 24 dB. Just low pass, is it? Or are there different types? Yeah, just low pass, okay. because we wanted to focus on this warm, resonant, low pass sounds. Mm -hmm. And then we have a digital former per voice. Here you could do high pass, digital filters and effects on a voice basis like drives, bit crushers and whatsoever. Okay. So warmth, saturation, pressure, expression, and here gets dirty. Okay, right. Because bit crusher is digital. So yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, here you can do stuff like this. And this is on a voice basis and you can use them in any order pre-filter, post-filter, or in parallel. You can also route the oscillator freely, directly in the analog filter, or for wife tables, you don't sometimes you don't need a filter, you go directly in the VCA. So you have a large set of different routing options. Okay, so modulation-wise, what can we do? Um, do you have cross-modulation, for instance? Can you do any kind of FM-style sounds? Um, FM is not fully decided. We have oscillator sync. Um, okay. We have six LFOs, three on the panel, another three on the display, three envelopes here on the panel, another three on the display, so six envelopes, right. multi-stage loopable envelope, LFO stuff, what we call complex modulator as well here, mm -hmm. and a big modulation matrix, currently 40 slots. Somebody asked, is it true? Yes, because I thought about Richard Devine wants that, <laughs> and he will also do sounds for it. Yeah. And, and Richard Devine gets what he wants. But he gets what he wants, Richard Devine. If he wants it, then he gets it. Yeah, and if he wants 100, I see if I can get 100. <laughs> OK. OK, so uh, just quickly talk us through yeah. um, the, uh, the expression options on the back panel here and the outputs. Yes. So we have headphones. We have two stereo outputs because we can do a dual timbre and split and layered mode. Mm -hmm. each, each can be routed to two stereo outputs here. We have stereo output, uh, stereo audio input for getting samples for into the granular sampler, for getting audio into the wavetable. Um, for example, we have a similar thing like in Nave, you can analyze audio files and then do wavetables from it. Mm -hmm. That could be by, by um, audio in and you can use it as live audio in as well by feeding it through effects or we are trying to get feed this also to the granular sampler. 
-hmm. Then we have sustain pedal, okay, you need yeah. this a control pedal, mm -hmm. similar circuit like in the KB37, so you can put in CV as well from a modular. Okay. Interesting to both USB types, normally you have the, the traditional type as a device for going into the computer. The type A, yeah. And now here is the controller, so yeah, now we have uh, this kind of fancy MIDI controllers, balls and whatever stuff, you can plug these directly here into yeah. the thing. Okay. And this is bus powered, so maybe you can load your smartphone as well. Okay, right, I see. Yeah. And SD card? SD card for exchanging samples and stuff, and classic MIDI. Dean okay. MIDI as well. Perfect. Well, let's let's have a little listen then, shall we? Okay. Okay, we haven't done sound design yet, so we are using just a few sounds here which we've done for development. So excuse me if it's not a Richard Devine sound or of any major sound design that we will put in. So let's start with maybe some uh, talking wavetables. <laughs> Then maybe let's get some co complex sound with different kinds of uh, synthesis technologies. Okay, always interesting to hear the filters. So I have a little bit of a raw filter sound now with a dual filter. So let's see how this sounds. And I'm removing the second filter here. Classic low pass filter. Now I'm turning in the dialing in the second filter to get a second resonance peak. And you see a little bit here the vocal effect of it. Um, so let's maybe have a listen to the um, granular sampler. So this has a kind of a vibrant structure, a little bit stringy, like a stringy vibrato, but not really. In fact, this is a harpsichord. Hap what a word in English. Cembalo is much better uh, sample. Just a single note. Um, let's get some... Okay, here's a bass. Okay, you can get some classic dirty bass sound. Let's get some... Yeah, this is uh, atmospheric stuff you can get from the fil resonator filter bank. Some arpeggiator stuff. More granular stuff with wave tables combined. Um, you can have also some gentle stuff, a little bit like a glockenspiel, but not exactly. Okay, we have um, each timbre in a dual timbre setting has its own effect sections of three effect slots with different algorithms like reverb, phaser, flanger, chorus, EQ, delays, um, bit crusher, master filters, and whatever we put in until somebody stops me and we need to release it. Um, so there's a whole section of effects. On the other hand, sometimes you want to have a dry sound if you are in a mixed situation. And then it's very easy, the effects, each effects slot has two uh, potentiometers here, dry wet, 
and uh, one central one knob parameter and you can easily remove them and further doing all the other editing on the display. So this is a sound with some effects. There's a and there's a reverb. There's a drive head mix. There's a reverb time. You can get endless reverb and you can remove the dry signal as well. And use a reverb as a kind of a sound structure as well. Some wavetable modulation going on here. Let's see what this is. For example, this has a, a resonator in it, which has a little noise burst, and you get the uh, resonance from it. Then it has a waveform, which is a sawtooth, and then we're adding some wavetables. Remove the others. Gives the extra. So this is a kind of a complexity of using different kind of synthesis engines. You may like the resulting sound or not. That's a more a matter of taste. But we want to demonstrate what is the level of complexity. And there's not much uh, modulation going on. The keyboard is of course a Fata TP8 uh, with aftertouch, monophonic of course. Uh, but you can use polyphonic aftertouch via the USB port if you have a polyphonic aftertouch uh, controller as well. Right. How much does it cost then and when will it be available, Rolf? We plan to release it in the last quarter this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, price isn't fixed, but we believe it will be 3,000 something. Okay. 3,000 something euros. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you.